I can start my lecture for today. It's, I'm talking about the graphical terminal Robotron K89. Eighteen. It's this device we can see here. Um, my name is Dirk Karnat. Um, our hobby room we called das Räumchen. It's, a, it's German for a little room. Um, and we do a, a computer um, ar archaeology, some art and some, some music there. Hobby colleagues and I. And... Um, Yeah, um, after uh, um, some, some gap in presentation for me, um, it should uh, present my, pre my presentations um, may start again with this device. And it's a graphical terminal, it's a 16 it's bit machine, and it's colored. Um, that that uh, points on my last lecture, there was the 90, the 8917 uh, terminal, and this terminal uh, was only a monochrome. And now we have the improved version, it's the colored terminal. As, um, as it is usual in lectures, um, there is an, ah, Gliederung, I don't know. Um, we have the, the, the points of the, of the lecture. First is uh, motivation, why I'm doing all this stuff. And I want to present the device that I'm talking about. I want to, um, to classify it against uh, similar devices, just to um, point on the device what it is, what it isn't. I, um, I'm talking about the architecture, how this device is constructed, how components work together. Um, and I want to talk uh, a little bit about the, the, the setup I'm presenting here, how to get this, um, this device to work. And the commands that are necessary to get this device to work, I, um, I will describe a little bit. And there are, there are graphic commands that the device understands. And we have some input commands that I, that I want to explain. And at least I'm talking a little bit about what is it, what it is necessary for, for, for this demonstration is a uh, huge amount of hardware of connectors. Some are working, some are not working. And last but not least, I want to demonstrate it in real. So my motivation, uh, the computer is not really back in life. Some, character, some characters are bad. Um, I want to research for these devices. I want to re research how the hardware works, how the software works. And that, that includes the firmware, the operating system, the um, applications. And another point of motivation is just to get it to work. Just like others get old timers to work. Just to have the success that it, that it runs that you can see with your own eyes, like this how this uh, device is working. And the uh, th third point of motivation is just to reconstruct how this device worked in further times, in, 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 for, not for, in, in former times. Especially if you have a terminal, you have to reconstruct everything around the terminal if you have it not in real hardware. And that is, the, that is the third point of motivation for me to do this. And um, another point is, what can you do today with this old hardware? You can, first point is to, um, to, um, to present it, to let it run so that it has um, 
so that is so that it has um, still a job today. And you can transfer knowledge about the system to others. That's another point. Um, because of this, devices exist. What you can do with it, and. Last but not least, you can explain how the um, how the functionality is. For this, you need you need the original hardware. Without it, that it's not really um, possible to explain. What about this device? What is device is used for? This device is used for showing graphical elements on screen. That's one. Point. The other point is just to input graphical data to process it on the host system. There are both ways. As, as a text terminal too, you, uh, on a text terminal you can input something to keyboard. The information you, you, type, you typed in is transferred to the host machine. What the host machine wants to say to you goes back to the terminal. Graphical terminal works similar. The only difference is you have no characters. You have graphical elements that you are presented, and you have the possibility to input graphical data. The manufacturer of this device is um, VEB Robotron Electronic Dresden. It's the we call it Stammbetrieb. It's it's the it's the main department in a uh, in, in inside of this this uh, this uh, Kombinat Robotron. And now we have a um, a slide that I have on every one of my lectures. It's a it shows a little bit how to classify this device. You, there you, you see um, a list of terminals produced in the, in the former GDR. And I have this slide on every of, uh, on, on, on every of, of my lectures. And now um, you have a point at um, 18918. It's this terminal. Some of the other terminals I already presented. Um, Another, the the um, the other amount of terminals um, is future work to present them. Some of these uh, terminals, it's very difficult to present them because they are very rare. It's you have no chance to get a real terminal. Perhaps the last one, and so it's really difficult to present with a little bit of original hardware, with much of, you have to simulate. So, um, so you have this one, it integrates in this list of terminals, and it's the first aspect of classifying this device. Another one is this. This device differs to his predecessor, car, um, Ah, uh, how is it right? 8917. It's a monochrome graphic terminal that works completely different than this. It's a complete different architecture, complete different, different bus system. Um, the other um, aspect to classify it is the A7150. It's the same case. Nearly the same hardware components, but um, 8150 is, um, is a PC. It's a DOS-based 8086 PC. The architecture, um, how is this device constructed inside? You have a backplane. The backplane is this one. It's, there's, there's no logic, it's, it's simply um, um, a backplane with some contacts, some wires. And one of these boards is the CPU. And this backplane is here in the middle. 
you have some boards in the front, and you have many boards in the back. The boards in the front, the floppy drive is situated here. This is the uh, this this are the boards of this of this um, of this computer. I can show some of these boards. Perhaps this one. This one is the floppy controller. The, flo the floppy controller consists mainly of some EEPROMs and a Z80 Zio serial chip. And here's the connector for the for the for the floppy. This one is called Controller, exter controller External Speicher. It's a Z80-based subsystem controller with a local bus to the floppy. You have a several Z80 in the system that um, controls the floppy, and in the PC version, it controls the hard disk too. This is the RAM board, 256 kilobytes of RAM in, uh, in, in this device. This board is one of the um, screen adapters. It's the monochrome screen adapter that controls this, this screen. This board has a several Z80 processor local. And if I find the CPU, uh, here it is. This is the CPU board. You have the 8086 processor. You have some peripheral chips of the of the 8086. Perhaps this PIC uh, with 59 on, on, on the end. 8259, 8257, 8251 is the serial, I think. And you have the boot, the, the firmware, the boot code to, to start, to start the, the computer. This is the, this is the main CPU board. This is another Z80 subsystem. It's called um, um, graphisches Subsystem. It's an, this one controls the graphic. Cards. It's a several Z80 with own with own firmware on on, on EEPROM, and it makes a local bus to the to the graphic cards, and the graphic cards are these. Graphic graphic cards are two. It's bound with with two cards. This is one. It has some logic on it, and the other one is these. Here you have 256 kilobytes of RAM and the video output. And with this um, connectors, the cards are connected too. <laughs> you have the main device, this one. You have a diskette drive in a terminal <laughs> because you have to load some firmware from disk. The um, predecessor has it had it complete in EEPROMs, and he, and here they choose um, um, another kind of work. They boot um, and CPM86 operating system. That's, uh, and the only purpose of this operating system is to load the graphics firmware to make the device running and to do the polling on the serial line to the host system. This is the monochrome screen connected to this Z80 based board. You have a color screen. Original color screen is um, not known in the uh, Robotron community. No one had this one. Um, 
So I um, can use this VGA screen, but it's only possible um, with some conversions. The output of this device is something nearly VGA with composite sync. So it's difficult to get this on a real VGA screen, only some screens work. If to get this device running, you need a converter. Um, this converter has an input of current loop, uh, 20 milliampere, and the output is V24 on to get it run on the, on the, on, on the notebook computer. To get this work, you need to know how the serial line is, is, um, has to be con configured. You have the typical um, 9600 with seven bits and odd parity. This monitor is called um, K7 72.29.25, and it's this one. This one is able to do graphics, but only monochrome. But it can be used as a, as a text monitor too. And in this setup, it is only a text, only a text monitor. To get this, to get a color screen running, it was possible to to switch some dip switches. In the, the documentation says, switch, uh, um, um, turn the switches to, to, the, to, the, to, to the other side um, if you want to run a color screen. I think um, they um, play a little bit with the intensity because on a color screen you can, uh, you can differ between red and green and on a monochrome screen, it's difficult. So I, th I think they do a little bit, um, they switch a little bit on, this, on the signals to get it lighter or darker. Then, to get this running, I need two adapters. This is the device side. The first adapter splits the um, horizontal and vertical um, signal from the composite sig signal. And the other one does simply sub D9 pin to sub D15 pin, so that you have a VGA screen. And um, the first VGA screen I took for testing doesn't work at either, no, no chance. Another one um, made a picture, but says wrong format. And this one finally worked. I had to adjust a little bit the, um, uh, the, the borders of the screen, but it works, it makes, it, 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 it makes a clear picture, everything's okay. And now, the next point to get us running is the software side. What commands are necessary to send to this device to get it running? Um, fortunately, I have the manual for this. It's this one, it's the typical GDR brown paper. And in this manual is described what, uh, what the commands um, must look like that you, can, um, that, that you have to send it. And first you have to send STX, it's the byte 02. And you have to finalize every command with, um, e with, with ETX, byte 03. And between this, you have um, parameters. But because of the 7 bit and parity, you only have 7 bit of data that you can use. 
So it's a little bit difficult to um, to construct this this commands. First um, parameter you have to send is the command code that the computer knows what what of the commands um, that are possible you want to send, and commands have um, different count of parameters. So you have to you you have to send one, two, three, and parameters. And this etx byte um, finalizes the command, so that so that so that the device knows command is completed now. If you want to code an an, an integer value, you have 15-bit integer value, and you have a sign. And now the the documentation says how to code it. First bit, you have a parity, then you have to send a one, you have to send a sign, and you, and you have five data bits. If your integer is um, low enough to fit in these five data bits, it's the only byte you, you may send. If your integer is larger, you have to send another byte, and the um, difference is that you have to set a zero bit on the directly after the parity. So that, so that um, it's possible to um, difference between this. this is, so you have an, an, uh, a flag to, um, to say, ah, another byte, the, the, the uh, integer value is complete, or another byte is, 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 um, is following. A little bit more complicated is this with um, um, floating values. So you have to code this, this mantis, this exponent. And uh, if you simply want <laughs> to um, construct a command with a float value, so you have to do a, have you do a little bit of, of uh, bit shifting. And um, uh, bit shifting is the wrong value. You have to construct uh, each bit, and it it is of course possible to um, put this in a program, but I didn't um, do it. Um, <laughs> every by every bytes I send to the terminal, I have constructed with pen and paper. First of the graphic commands that you have to send this open workstation. It, it initialized the, initializes the screen, sets some um, workspace values. And so I, and here I demonstrated how I um, constructed the bits. The command code is, uh, is 103, um, 67 hex. And so I decomposed it to the bits um, separated it to the values I need, and finally I have to send 02, um, 23, 47, 03, and then the command is is, is okay, and the um, device op executes the open workstation command. Then I have to put the, the 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 polyline command, and the polyline command. Um, is command code 11. Um, on the polyline command, I have to define how many points I want to define in this command, and if I want to define two points, um, then I have to send xy coordinates of point 1, xy coordinates of point 2, and it looks like this, finally, what you have to send to the, to the, to the device to get to draw a line. Uh, coordinates as um, floating value, uh, it looks a little bit complicated, but all these steps are necessary to get this bytes, um, to, constru to construct this bytes correctly, and you have this command to um, as, the, as, the, uh, as the answer of this task, so 
this line of this line of bytes you have to send to get a line to to um, to say the the device to 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 draw a line. Another one is set polyline representation. There is the possibility to define a type of line. To say is line solid? Is it dotted? Is it dashed? How thick it is? What color has it? The default color is white. So I thought a uh, white color. Uh, it's it's a color adapter color screen. I have to do something with this polyline representation to get, for instance, green color to uh, demonstrate it. So I have to execute this command. Um, there is an index six. The index um, till five are predefined, and index six is a new. So I have a completely new entry that um, defines a different type of line. And to use this different type of line, that I had, uh, so I have to set it. I can choose between every line, between an amount of line represent representations, and I choose my newly created line index six, and the device then draws a green line. Another point is how to do an input on this device. Um, all I said before is um, that we have an output, computer draws anything, and the other is the input. The input device is this graphic tablet, and on a graphic tablet you can set coordinates, and the coordinates um, that you set are transferred into the terminal, and the terminal transferred, uh, transfers them to the host system, so that the host system knows, ah, user had, um, uh, uh, did a user did an input of an of an coordinate, coordinate, x value, y value, and it's um, the purpose of this is that you can uh, digitalize um, construction drawings that that are on paper. You can uh, put this paper on this your your paper on this graphics tablet. Um, go to every coordinate, and if you have the set of coordinates, uh, much of work, <laughs> um, then, you, then, then the computer can has, has, the com has, has the complete drawing to, rep to, um, to recreate it on the screen. The research of the, of the input methods are not really complete. I can show a little bit, but it's a golden path that is working. And um, if I change any of the parameters, it doesn't work yet. So I, I have to do a further research. But I hope I, I can show that I can input one point. First, I have to do is um, execute a command named initialize locator. Some parameters that I don't understand um, completely, I have to set. If I set it other way, it doesn't work. But this way it works. Next command is that I have to set a locator mode. There are different, there are different um, locator modes. Also you can set a point. You can pick something. You can input a string. There are some input classes you have to um, you can choose, but only this point I got running. And the third is request locator. Request locator means to um, show this cross on the screen that you can move the cross and set a point. But moving across <laughs> with this graphic device, um, I didn't get it running.
to get it running, you have to do exactly some steps on the graphics tablet. You have to reset the graphics tablet. If you don't reset it, it, it doesn't work. You have to do a calibration. That means you have to set uh, this, this um, pointer to coordinate zero, zero. You have to um, um, choose the point option on the graphic tablet, and then you are able to enter a coordinate. Only on this way it runs, and I have to um, think about why this golden path runs, why other options don't run. It's, um, it's a to-do in, in, in research. So, um, I inserted this slate because I want to say a little bit about this demonstration, this huge hardware that is here. The device, uh, the, the, the computer that makes the slides is this one. It's called Robotron A5105. And uh, I use an NZ80 assembler program to um, program this, this graphic chip to do some um, to do some colors. This computer has an RG, uh, has an RGB output, SCART. This goes to an RGB VGA wandler, uh, uh, converter. And the plan was to get this converter, to, to get this VG, to transform this VGA, VGA signal to a VGA grabber. And this VGA grabber is connected over Ethernet. And if this works, I can have, uh, I have a, I have a, I have the screen, this, this grab it screen on the, on the, on the laptop. And then it would be possible to get, to have a modern HDMI port to display the picture of this device. The trouble um, before starting the lecture was that this device is connected over Ethernet and something went wrong while do this TCP IP broadcasting. The computer didn't find the device, but everything is connected correctly on my um, presentation table. It worked an hour ago <laughs> and it doesn't work, I don't know. <clears throat> And um, the point on this um, VGA grabber uh, device is it is capable to display the signal, this non uh, exactly uh, VGA signal of this terminal. I got it running on a table because I don't know why it's not running here. I need this very complex um, uh, devices just to get this old um, video signals somehow to, tra to transfer it in the modern world. Um, it's difficult to get VGA perhaps may be run, but um, it's, it's more and more difficult. And I need a tool, a setup to get this, uh, this, this pictures running that, that, that I have a notebook. Notebook has HDMI, displays its screen, and I have the picture of my old device. That's the, that's the plan I have. I think it should work. It doesn't work. I don't know. But now, the demonstration of this device. Ah, one, one point. <laughs> to use this notebook, I have to use an USB serial converter to another converter in this. Okay. 
So the device is already booted. I have to switch VGA signal the hard way. So we have this screen. I can I can reboot the machine so that so that we see see the boot process. Where's the reset switch? Ah, it's here, I think. Ah. Ah, perhaps we see. Ah, it's it's blue to black. It's a little bit difficult to see, but. On text screen, it's, it's, it's better to see. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to see on, on, the, on the color screen. You have to press a G and enter, and it, it, it runs a CPM 86 operating system, and um, and loads the the firmware. Ah, on 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 bottom, it's it's better to see. So this is the wonderful um, um, test screen that it shows when when the when the firmware started. We have to wait a bit, a little bit, because it's load from from from, from floppy. So now the system is ready, and um, is it is it possible to to switch to um, to the HDMI? Ah, ah, the HDMI. Okay, this is the program called HTERM that enables me to send um, to configure the the report and to send bytes of commands to the the report without having um, any code page problems, something like that. The first command. Um, I use this open workstation. The, the, the floppy disk should work. Open workstation um, loads some tables, some workspace areas from the disk to the memory. Here you, you, you see the command, like it's shown in the slides. And now I... Um, Execute this polyline representation command. I choose the newly created polyline representation. And now, graphic screen should show, should show a green line. Uh, it, it is, really, is it really green? It looks a little bit... It's green? Okay. So, and so I can execute some polyline commands. And if I've done everything correct, then it will show an open door. That's the logo of our um, hobby room. Can you switch it around to that, that, that we can see it? Ah, okay. Ah, on the uh, lower area, it's a little bit better to, to see that screen. And I can do some text too. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> and now I, I can... I can um, show how the, gra how the graphic ta tablet works. First I have to do is this initialize locator command. Then I have the set locator command. 
And when I say request locator, this cross should disappear on screen. Is that correct? Ah, okay. And now um, I go to the to the um, to the graphics tablet. And first, I have to do is is I have to is the is the graphic tablet on the camera? Um, what what can I do just to 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 hold it uh, this way? Oh, okay. So I I reset it. So the lights are flashing. It initializes. I have to um, point to zero location. Then I um, have to choose point. Ah, it's hard to see. Point. Ah. And if you show on screen, it, if everything is, is okay, it, the screen shows a star. Ah, it, 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 was, it, it, um, it was to see for, for one second. Do you have it on the camera, the star? I, I, I do I, I, I do it again. I have to res I have to reset this. I uh, have the zero point on the coordinate system. I have I have to choose point. Ah, I have I have to reinitialize this locator that that we have the the cross. I forgot. So we have to cross. I have to do the procedure again. Point. So we 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 did see this this star sign. And this way the tablet works. Um, and it's further work to do um, how to get it really running. I, I think it, it, it must be possible to um, move this, um, this cross. I would think so. But it's a further uh, work to do to... Um, to find out how it's, how it's running. I have a little bit of literature here. The um, graphic standard is GKS that they use, graphical kernel system. And you have a um, German book, an English book about this. That's the standard of this, of this graphic system. And um, there must be some journals from Eastern Germany where this terminal is presented. This setup is nearly the, the setup that I show, or it's only the, uh, the, the older variant of the case. And um, in 1986, the device was used in... Um, as a peripheral device of the um, GDR mainframe. And in 1988, it was used with the GDR VEX system as host. Um, the 32-bit computer of the GDR was a clone of the VEX 11780. Uh, cloned this machine, this is the GDR variant of the machine, and they use the graphical terminal as a peripheral device on this, on this machine too. And 
these are the um, two magazines where this device uh, is um, was written about it. And this um, journal is Neue Technik im Büro. It's Eastern German um, um, computer journal. I have finished. I have no idea if I'm in time or not. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming, for listening. And...